Hello again, Michael Friedberg here from beautiful North Carolina. Today I have two products for review. The first is a soap that was sent for review from Prohibition Style Accoutrement. Uh, this is the Corpse Reviver. I had to choose it based on the, on the name alone. Obviously that name just stands out. They all have a whole line of these, uh, I think it's the Prohibition Time, Prohibition Period um, cocktails or mixed drinks. Corpse Reviver, as you can see from the label, it has an absinthe, orange, lime, and gin scent. And it does, in fact, I'll show you what it looks like in the, uh, in the container. This is, as you can see the color, slightly yellowish. Um, it is a hardish soft soap. Poetic, eh? Um, you do get some sweet orange scent. You get a bit of sort of dry, bitter lime scent. Gin, not, not so much, uh, but the absinthe is like a bit, a bit of a kind of a, an underlying kind of a woodsy scent, but it does actually smell like a mixed drink. In fact, if you tend to drink things like, you know, Zagarat or something like that, or, you know, something like these, this smells like a mixed drink. Very nice scent. Um, it is not heavy. It is relatively strong off the, uh, off the puck. I have some pressed into the Captain's Choice loading bowl. That's what will be the remainder for today. The brush, well, the brush is the last of three, but it really was the start of this whole thing. There was a previous video I had done on the um, Carnivus and Richardson brush that I had won, which came with a smaller tuxedo knot with a lower loft. And that brush, like other tuxedo knots I've used, is a bit of a springy knot. It doesn't splay open easily, and it's got kind of a bit of, you know, relatively good backbone to it. Well, Great Dog had commented on that about the fact that it had more to do with the, the loft the way that it was sent to the brush than the style of the knot itself. And so we had a discussion and he agreed to, uh, to send me what I thought was a brush. It ends up being three, but this is the last of the three. This is again the Rosewood Coco Bolo. Just take a look at how amazing that grain is. Yeah, it's just a super striking style of wood. Love the color. Got one of those kind of like tiger eye kind of thing going on. This I think is the 28 or maybe will be the 30 millimeter tuxedo knot set with a slightly higher loft. Um, so it has a bit more room for side to side and it's opened up a little bit. It's not being held quite so tightly because of a, uh, a lower loft. Beautiful keyhole style brush handle. So that's gonna be the brush for today. The razor, uh, it is the Maggard V3 uh, head, which has, by the way, I did not notice this the first time or if I did, I completely forgotten it and I noticed it on the Yaki head if you look at the, uh, the the base plate and the way the posts are cut angled in the top cap, they form a very smooth curved line. Um, I suspect these are the same heads, but um, in lieu of further information, well, I was just, it's a suspicion, a supposition, shall we say. I'm going to pair that with the uh, the MR5 handle. I have a washer in there. It is a Voshkod blade on its third use for today. Okay, let me wet my face. We'll go and get lathered up. Now I have used a Prohibition style soap before, which was their fine butter soap. And if you recall, that had a very, um, that was a very hard soap with kind of an odd, kind of a waxy texture to it. Um, and that was in fact, uh, because, of, because it's hard and because it's kind of oddly waxy and slippery, actually a little bit hard to, to lather. You know, you look at it and it's like, well, that won't be that bad. And they did recommend at the time that you should bloom it, which I don't really ever bloom any soap. So it was in fact a bit hard to lather. It did produce a good lather in the end, but I think I said something like not a beginner soap or something like that. This is miles ahead of that soap in my opinion. This is just a much better soap, much easier to use, much easier to lather. I'm gonna shake up most of the water in the brush. Um, what I have found is that you can overwater this soap. If you begin to lather with too wet a brush, you get kind of a, uh, an initially kind of a little bit of a disappointing frothy lather. There's no need for that. Start off with a bit of a drier brush and just add a little bit of water as you're loading. I'm just dripping a few drops in there now. Just so you can see. That's, ah, sorry for the clanking. Thick and pasty. So I'm gonna add a bit more water try to lighten it up a little bit, but don't overdo it yet. Now that has got to be plenty. I will say that these synthetic brushes do tend to pick up a lot of soap very quickly, so there is plenty on there. I'm going to drip a little bit of water onto the face of the brush. 
wet my face again a little bit and we'll start building the lather. So I know you're wondering, well, what about that knot? It is in fact a little bit looser, a little more forgiving than the Carnivus and Richardson knot, the other tuxedo, but it still has a lot of spring to it and a lot of backbone. It does not splay nearly as easily as, for example, the full horsehair that I've got or the, uh, the Sinbad knot that I reviewed a few weeks ago. On the other hand, it has a delightful scrubby feel to it without feeling irritating or scratchy at all. Shape of the handle makes it very easy to hold. All right, I'm gonna drip a bit more water on there. Now you can see it's starting to build up a bit of a thicker, creamier lather. Scent is a little more subdued once you start to lather, but it's definitely still there. Not quite as strong as when you're smelling it off the puck. Now the soap has a number of butters in there, and I hope I can remember them all. I think it's shea butter, cocoa butter, mango butter, olive butter. And there's one more in there. Let me take a quick look at the label and see if I can. And the print on this is tiny, by the way, which, you know, for those of us who are getting a bit older, makes it a little harder to read. Shea butter, cocoa butter, mango butter, sweet almond oil, which I think I forgot to list the first time. Coconut oil, obviously, coconut oil based soap, and it is a vegan soap. Olive butter oil, so soy butter, and that's it. Vegan and uh, scheme of things, very nice. So we're going to start the, start the shave going. Voshkov blade, third use. Uh, I did have a shave or two at the beginning. I had to remind myself this razor is in the scheme of things. more efficient than comfortable and with a heavy handle just gotta watch it two days of growth as always Soap is generally, generally slick. But it does feel a little bit different than some of the soaps I've been using recently. And I think it's just a, uh, a feel. The, uh, the, pro the level of protection just feels a bit different. A little, a little thinner, maybe. Yeah, for some reason, this is a razor that... I don't know why I tend to push it out a little bit too much. Just have to remind myself, light, light, light on the touch. easy first pass yeah it's um you know it's weird you sort of go through soap after soap after soap you know week after week um, I know there are many out there that are probably using a soap for weeks and weeks at a stretch which of course I used to do until it, the soap was entirely gone but um, through these week-long reviews they, they do give you a like a, a pretty good feel for where a soap is different than the other soaps you're using doesn't always make it easy to describe what that difference is, but you can definitely feel a bit of a difference. So to me, this just feels like it has more on the, a bit more focus on the slickness side than it does sort of on the cushion or protection. I 
But I will say, compared to the first soap of theirs that I used, this is much, much easier to work with. A much more satisfying, easy to build lather. There we go. I'm sure like many of you, you probably keep futzing with the lather on your face when the fact it's already perfectly good. There's just a couple more. Because remember, you're shaving for the fun of it, not because it's just a task to get through. I should also mention, by the way, that unfortunately there will be no review video next week because I will be returning from the Maggard Read Up. Maggard Read Up. Maggard Meet Up. But I do hope to take, if I can, a number of pictures and maybe record some video from my phone and do a, uh, an impressions video, maybe mid of the week, and maybe sort of, or add it in for Sunday, for the following Sunday. I know it's always fun. I certainly have the exact same feeling. It's always fun to watch someone else's, you know, trip impressions. go. I've also somehow had a tiny weeper or two every day this week, but not visible during the shave. They only came out after the fact. So we'll see if that happens again today. Yeah, I find this razor in the scheme of things, really actually very easy to use. It's like the Yaki, you just have to just watch the pressure. And it's just, it's amazing how easy it kind of goes wrong when you're distracted or you're rushing in the morning, just not really taking the time to listen to the tool that you're using. And yeah, you do have to pay attention. Now, obviously, if you shave with a single razor and that's like your primary razor and you use it all the time, it's like muscle memory, but since I'm switching from razor every week, and sometimes the head style change can be pretty dramatic. I often find on Monday and or Tuesday, I'm still adjusting to the fact that I've switched. Monday mornings is exacerbated a little bit by the fact that of course, it's less than 24 hours since I last shaved. So I also have to remind myself to go a little bit easy on Mondays. All right, let me just squeeze out the remainder from the brush. You know, the knot, like all these tuxedo knots, they just work so well, easy to use. If you like a little bit of spring, a little bit of pushback in the brush, these make a really excellent, excellent choice. And you know, the fact that the, uh, the fact that the handle is just so dramatic and striking really just adds to the, uh, you know, the overall feel. Something nice about not using a mass-produced item as he holds up a mass-produced item. All right, this is the against the grain. This is the pass where I think I noticed the most that there's very good slickness. Like in general, slickness is good. You know, no issue with the razor moving over the skin but there's definitely a different feel to the level of cushion or protection. I 
It's also a bit of a noisy razor, and I know that for me, that noise tends to make me want to press down more. Very gentle buffing. This is one spot where I really have to watch the pressure because this is where easy to overdo it. All right, almost done. Yeah, residual slickness. Um, it's there, but it's not. It's not striking or dramatic. Like I would not recommend shaving without the uh, shaving without lather. I'm only doing it there because it's kind of the last last little touch up. Now, the thing about that razor is, it's maybe less comfortable than the more mild razors that I do tend to gravitate to, but it does deliver, in the scheme of things, a very, very nice, smooth, clean shave. I'm going to leave it right there. I could, if I really wanted to, and take the time to live an extra cleanup pass, but I'm not going to bother. I'm going to rinse my face, pull off the rest of the soap with the hand towel. I know that for some of you that drives you crazy, but what can I do? All right, let's dry my face off, and then I'm going to break with tradition, as you'll see in just a moment, and use an alcohol-based aftershave, and not only alcohol, but also menthol. Yeah, that's still a very, very nice clean shave. You know, that, that soap does feel a bit different than uh, many of the other soaps that I've used, but still, I've had, in the scheme of things, very good shaves all week, other than just a little miscue on my part on the pressure for Monday and Tuesday. And that's entirely me, that's not the soap. All right, for some reason this seems like a really good fit after Corpse Reviver, Shambhala from Folsom & Co. I know they were making a comeback and I think they did in fact actually revive the company. I just don't know actually where, where it stands right now. So um, in, for the time being, I'm still using this original formulation mildly and intermittently just a brief brief hit of burn from the alcohol very quickly fades there should be now the menthol coming on man i always always liked this scent from the first time i used it just mm, a slightly sweet just a sweet cologne scent very very nice and enough of a hit of menthol given the heat outside now that that actually is a very nice cooling feel so what i'll do after the shave later is apply some aftershave balm mm. Mm. well i think that ended up actually pretty pretty good not bad for a dead guy if you uh catch my drift all right let's do a quick review of the products puns aside prohibition style accoutrement the corpse reviver this is the absinthe orange, lime, and gin. A nice hard-ish soft soap, or a soft-ish hard soap, depending on where you want to slide the scale. Um, scent strength off the puck, as I said. Very distinct. In lathering, that tends to, uh, tends to reduce a little bit. Yes, they still come with these metal tins, and I know for those of you that don't like the fact they get banged up, well, that is kind of how it is with these tins. That's just the nature of the beast. But still, no worries on that front. 
The soap is slick, it has been offering really pretty good shaves all through the week. I've just had to sort of modify shave based on the razor, which I'll talk about in just a second. It definitely feels a little less protective and fatty than some of the other soaps I've used, but still, overall, delivering a very good shave. Today's brush is this fantastic rosewood cocoa bola brush from Grey Dog with this large 28, maybe 30 millimeter tuxedo knot. The tuxedo knot remains springy. It does not splay open as easily. This one is a bit more open and a little more prone to splaying simply because of the size of the knot and the loft. It still has good backbone. It still has good scrub to it. So if that's what you're looking for in a synthetic brush, tuxedo knots, I think are gonna be a very nice fit. I'm gonna give you one last view of the gorgeous handle. God, just fantastic. I just love, I love those natural products and I just love the work that people are putting into it. So great doc, thank you again so much for the brush for all three of the brushes, they are all spectacular, and I just want to thank you so much again for, for providing them. Really very generous of you. Today's Razor, the uh, the Maggard, this is the V3 head, which is their standard standard DE head on the uh, Maggard Razor's MR5 handle. I like this handle. It may, in fact, actually be a little on the heavy side for me, but I do like the ergonomics. Very easy to hold and very easy to use. The knurling is, is excellent. Very, very nice option. Efficient shave, less comfortable than efficient. I think if you had to sort of slide on the scale, it's more on the efficient side than the comfortable side. But with that said, still very easy to use and the end result um, is very, very good. And we've capped it off with once again a return to the alcohol-based splash Folsom & Co. Shambhala. I have to say guys, the first day this week when I splashed this back on my face again, it's like, oh yeah, that's what I love. I do love an alcohol or and or witch hazel based splash to close off the shave and then do the balm after that. That's my personal preference. You know, I miss out on the splash when I don't use it. I just stick with the balm. I feel like I am missing something there. All right, yeah, so just one last reminder, there will be no video review next week. Hopefully on Sunday or maybe sometime during the week, I'll be able to put up a impressions video from the Maggard meetup. If you're going to be there, I look forward to meeting you there in person. I hope you have safe travels there if you're going. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really appreciate the time you're taking to watch these videos. Of course, please feel free to leave questions or comments against this video or any previous video. Again, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate the comments and the questions. You guys are really doing a fantastic job on that. And until next time, or until next week, Saturday, if I see you there, goodbye.